Good morning, everyone. Okay, so uh, in today's hands-on session, we'll be giving you a brief outline of what is Laplacian foam, how to set up a 1D conduction case, how to run the simulation, and some basic results and post-processing we'll show you. So, uh, first thing is, this Laplacian, what we are going to solve is the diffusion equation. Okay, this is our equation, which everybody will be familiar with. Okay. So only thing is the row CP value we have divided by it throughout. Mm -hmm. So our right hand side is of the form Q triple prime, prime by rho CP. Okay. So now if you want to look at how open foam solves this uh, uh, solves this equation, you have to go to the source code. Mm -hmm. The source code is located at this location: CD dollar foam underscore solvers basic and then Laplacian foam. When you do that, you will be able to you will be able to see this source code. So I will just show you the path of that so that quickly. So to go to that path, open your uh, Ubuntu terminal, or if you are in Linux, just press Control Alt and T, and then type the path. So uh, the the quickest way to go over there is just to type SOL. When we type SOL, it takes you directly to the solvers uh, dictionary. So all these are shortcuts. Like RUN is a shortcut to go to the run directory. SOL is a shortcut to go to solvers directly. Similarly, TUT is a shortcut to go to your tutorial directory. So now I, I said I am in the solvers directory. If I want to know uh, what are the solvers, I can just do LS. And you can see that there are multiple solvers over here. Now Laplacian is in the basic folder. So I will go to basic. In that, see Laplacian form is there. So I will go to Laplacian. So I think by now everybody is familiar with using the CD command, CD to change the directory. Now in Laplacian form, if you see there is a file named Laplacian form.c. You can open that file by using your gedit text editor. So gedit space Laplacian form.c. I hope everybody is able to do this. For those who are not able to do, I think I will go back. So when you open, you will be somewhere maybe in your run directory or in your home directory. Just type SOL. After that, type CD space basic, then Laplacian, and then press enter. Now you will enter into the Laplacian form. If you type LS, there will be a file name Laplacian form.c. You have to open that. So to open that, you just uh, type gedit Laplacian form.c. So instead of gedit, just write notepad.exe. So it will open the same file in notepad. So if you see, this is your this is your main C file or uh, the main uh, .c file that runs when you run the Laplacian. So in this, what is important to see is this this section over here. So this is this is what you have to look at. See the equation that we are solving is ddt of t. That means dt by dt minus fvm. That is Laplacian hmm, of t is equal to source. So now the source we have to add using the FP models uh, file that is available. So from the FP models files, it will pick up the source and then it will solve this equation. So this is uh, this is what is shown to you in this in this PPT slide. Okay. So now if you look at it, what is the uh, if we uh, write our uh, conduction equation in the form that it is being solved, we see that our source term is nothing but Q triple prime by rho CP. That is volumetric heat generation divided by rho into Cp. So understanding this is important because generally whenever uh, in conduction somebody talks about source, you will only think that okay, source is just Q triple prime. Okay, So in this case now, it is not Q triple prime, but Q triple prime by rho Cp. So this the value of this quantity is what you have to enter in the source. Now, if you go to the next slide, this is our problem statement. So we begin and uh, what we need for this is we need a simple geometry. Okay, in which at uh, at the left end we are setting the temperature as zero, right end we are again setting the temperature as zero, and internally we are adding some heat source. Now the material that I've chosen for this is copper, 
So if you see, it has whatever the thermal conductivity, density, and specific heat mentioned. So from these values, I have calculated what should be the diffusivity. That is alpha. That is K by rho CP value. And also what should be the source term. So source term will be Q triple prime divided by rho CP. So Q triple prime I have chosen to be 1E6 watt per meter cube. Okay. So this is our case setup. Now, for in this, we are not going to give you the uh, you know case setup files ready as uh, as it is as we have done in the previous cases because we also want to teach you how to uh, use some case file structure that is already there like in this case and then modify it so that it works for you because this is what you will be doing in your uh, own application whenever you want to run so how do we now generally begin we want to solve a case for Laplacian foam. So we should go to the tutorial uh, uh, folder and pick up a case of Laplacian foam and then modify that because that case will have all the necessary file structures that, uh, that are needed to solve the Laplacian foam. So this is the general approach. So when we wanted to solve a case for simple foam, we went ahead and picked up a case from the simple foam tutorial. When we wanted to solve a case for icofoam, that is cavity, we went ahead and picked up the cavity case. So to copy a case from uh, uh, to copy a case from the Laplace in foam, we'll be using these commands. So first, what you need to do first, we are saying go to the run directory. So I'll minimize this. So my I, my terminal is here. Okay. Now you are in your uh, solvers directory. To go to your run directory, just type run. It takes you to your run directory. The longer command will be cd dollar foam underscore run or short shortcut will be just type run. Now in this, uh, the second command we are saying is to make a directory called conduction. So to make a directory, the command is mkdir space conduction. So it will create a folder named conduction. So when I do that and if I do ls, you see a folder named conduction has already come up. Okay. Now. What I need to do in this, I am creating a folder. I am copying a folder from the Laplace in foam case. So the command will be cp minus r, copy the folder, and then dollar. So if you are having difficulty, Viraj will uh, copy and paste those commands for you. You can copy it from the chat as well. And make sure that you type everything with underscore spaces, everything properly. Foam underscore tutorials forward slash basic. So this is the location where from where we are going to pick up the tutorial case in that Laplace in foam and flange. So we are picking up the flange case. I'll give a space where I want to save it. I want to save it in my conduction folder. So in conduction, but in conduction, I will also tell you to make a case too. Hmm? That is wherein to modify something. So that's why in conduction, I will create one more a folder named case one. Okay. So in conduction, a folder named case one. So when we do this and I do, I will go into that folder CD conduction slash case one to go into the folder. You have to do CD conduction. Now you're in the conduction folder. If I type LS, there's a folder named case one that is already created to go into that cd space case one. Now we are in a case one directory. If I do ls, you will be able to see that there is something called as zero, uh, all clean, all run, constant, flange dot ans and system. So now that uh, what we will do is we don't need all these all run and all clean files. Sorry to interrupt you. So yeah. the, the note, notepad dot exe Laplacian form dot c uh, it is not uh, work, working afterwards. It is not working. Uh, I I have typed uh, the same thing and uh, uh, it is showing that uh, this folder is not existing. So see, you have to understand notepad when you are giving the command notepad.exe and Laplace in foam, what you are telling the uh, the system to do, you are telling the system to open Laplace in foam with notepad 
and where is laplace in form it is in the current directory so that will only work if you are in this in this directory can you see mm. slash mm. opt open form 9 application but, and then laplace in form yeah. if you are not but, in that directory mm. then i am this application solver application yes. solver directory i am Ah, huh. so mm. so if you don't do the commands that are there before, it will not work for you. So the what were the commands that we did before? So we we were in C here. Yeah. So as soon as I got to the solvers directory here, I mm. went to basic directory, and then to Laplace in form. So if you miss these commands, it will not work. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Thank uh, you. Okay. Once Hello. you understand what that command is, you will also understand the error quickly. Sir, uh, here we are doing uh, one connection folder in that directory. After that, we are creating one case folder, uh, case one folder in same directory. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Y'all leave that Laplace in form. Just close it. Okay, you don't need to. That I just showed you where the source code is, right? Mm -hmm. So that later on, if you want to see, yes, that sir. is not the agenda mm -hmm. now. Okay, close that. Mm -hmm. Don't go sir. To your, uh, go to your run directory. Hello. Yes. Don't sir. Yes. So whenever we whenever we uh, miss a line or forget a line, so do we need to restart the whole thing? No, depends where you are, right? So you have to so, follow so, the so, sequence of commands. Okay, so suppose there are 10 line and uh, I miss the line 5, uh, directly 4 to 6, I have done uh, by mistake. So do I need to start from the line 1? Now, uh, okay, now it, it is not exactly like that. Depends on what those commands are. So that's why I'm saying you understand the command, then you will understand. Right, it may be that, uh, like see first, you have done, your, uh, if you see this, if you go the first command, you're going to the run directory. The next, you're creating a folder named conduction over there. Then you're mm. copying the contents. Then you're going into this. So there is a sequence, right? Mm. So you please follow this sequence. So uh, that's why we have given you command sequence by sequence. If you miss anything, open this PPT. We have shared this with you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so keep it side by side. Keep it like this. Keep the other terminal this way. And then uh, please follow this side by side so that you don't you don't miss anything. Yeah. So in that command, what is the uh, significance of plans? That word plans. Ah. Okay. So that that we don't need now. Okay. This is only if we are importing some geometry. Hmm? So that's why then then all those things will be needed. Those extra files. So what we are doing is see. So to quickly recap, what we have done is, ah, uh, we have gone to a run directory. In that, I'm highlighting those commands. Okay. In the run directory, I have created a folder named conduction. Okay. Now, in that conduction, I'm copying the uh, tutorial case from the Laplace in form called flange. And inside conduction, I'm creating a folder named case one. Now, I'm entering into the folder. So don't forget this command cd conduction. I'm entering into the folder. Then I'm entering into case one. And I'm seeing ls means to see what are the contents. So now you see that there are other files which we don't need, like wall clean, all run, and flange. So our next step will be to delete them. To delete them, type the following command rm flanges dot ans space and then all and then star. Okay. When we do this, if you see it is flange, not flanges. Okay, okay. Huh? That's why. Right. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. So when I do this, so it, I think it all all it already deleted. Yes, uh, because all it had all it had previously deleted. That's why it couldn't find that. So if you see, if I do ls, those unwanted files have been removed. Now, what we need to do, we need to mesh, right? So. Uh, a geometry that we have, right? It is a simple, simple 2D geometry. So it's, uh, it's uh, setup is similar to our cavity case, right? It's setup is similar to our cavity case. So what do you need to do? You need to copy that uh, block mesh dict from the cavity case into this. So the command for that 
is there in your ppt you can type that so i am copying the block mesh disk from my cavity case so viraj will type that command so you can follow that cavity cavity and in this system and block mode it uh please make sure you don't make any spelling mistakes like i did in the first one so then and then i am saying then paste it in my system right so this command should work if i have not made anything this is tutorial in the okay now if i do ls cd space system and then ls so that block magic has been copied okay now what we need to do is we need to edit this so to edit uh i'll go back i'll just type so my gedit is not working i'll type notepad.exe for whom gedit is working type that notepad.exe and now you have to edit your uh, block magic is in system so you type system and then block magic so our points generally they will remain same only what we need to do is if you look at the diagram okay that i have given over here uh what did you do after cd system slash okay yeah so after cd system hmm no you don't need to go into system i wanted to show you that block mesh dict is copied okay. okay you can be in your case one folder so you go back do cd space dot dot so you come back to the system folder that is your case one folder so you not system your case one folder and in, after that you type notepad dot exe space if, system slash block mesh dict so with this you if it's not working then we can use explorer dot exe You see, Explorer dot exe is to open the file system. Notepad okay. should work for you, or okay. gedit Notepad or gedit. One of those text editor editors should work for you. Okay. Okay. So we have this block mesh dict. Now this we have to modify. Yeah. So if you look at the geometry over here, so our geometry is similar to the cavity case. Okay. Only thing is, uh, the x x direction is longer, y direction is shorter. okay and z we don't need to add much thickness so accordingly we have changed the points okay so in the x direction i kept 1 1 meter in the y direction i am keeping 0.1 and uh, in the z direction let it be 0.1 only by default so x i am keeping as it is only the y y coordinate i am changing for the points now my structure everything remains same only now it will not be it will no longer be my moving wall it will be something called as side 1 that is my left side okay side 1 will be type patch this is the patch for the side 1 similarly i i need a patch for side 2 John in my geodet file, it's coming boundary moving wall and then type wall. Yes, yes. So I am editing. I am editing those. Okay, so you have, have to, to remove the moving wall. Yes, so you have to remove the moving wall and rename that and change it to. Uh, so if you see in the PPT, I have shared what exactly needs to be in your block mesh disk. So you have to edit it as so that it is exactly like that. If you are able to edit it quickly, that's fine. Otherwise, I will share this file with you. okay so just to i am just trying to tell you what we are doing okay that was the boundary uh, that was the boundary conditions for the cavity now we have changed it so all the structure this will change so i have made side 1 similarly i will make side 2 for side 2 it will be the right face that will be 2651 so i don't need these two i only need 2651 okay now side 1 side 2 is done uh then we don't have to see like how here we have we had given front and back as empty hmm? 
so we can keep we can do that we can keep front and back and also the other two sides are empty or a quicker way to do that will be there is something called as adding a default patch that you have to do outside boundary and before uh, see after edges so you add something called as a default patch so that whatever is not mentioned over here will have the def uh, characteristics of the default patch instead of adding two three you know uh, typing the names and giving over here this is a much quicker way to do this so name will be empty patch because you can give any name that is not a problem and type we are giving empty because you are not solving this is a 1d problem we are not solving in the uh, say y or in the z direction we are solving it only in the one direction that is x direction so you, you will give only two faces in the x direction that is the left wall and the right wall i hope this is clear you are only giving the left wall and the right wall the top bottom front and back will all be empty because you are not solving in those direction and to quickly give that you have to use the default patch so that will so with because of that you don't have to add those spaces so this will be quick so we don't have we are not merging anything so this file is done so only these were the changes george so, uh, one question uh, what is this type patch yeah patch is a generic label so uh, whenever we create a boundary we have to either call it like wall uh, wall patch you know then there is also something called as cyclic you know depending upon what is your need so patch is a generic label which we called it is a it is a default so, label if which, it is a wall then boundary we condition it. does it correspond to this patch no in patch you can give anything like inlet boundary condition outlet boundary conditions those boundary conditions they work with the general uh, label patch where will you give uh, like which boundary condition this patch is huh. so boundary condition we don't give in this file no? this is only for creating the geometry boundary okay, condition okay. will be in your t mm -hmm. t file in this okay. case it will be in your t file in other cases it will be in your u file p file okay this is here you are just specifying what is the type so type for this is a patch and for here also the, this one also i think i should make it patch okay so my side one and side two are patches and default patch is empty so just after making those changes you can save the file if you are you all are able to do this quickly you all can do this otherwise should i share this file please type in the chat so that i will share but before that let me check run and check so that there is no error in that so to run this okay i think i forgot to change the number of divisions yeah so uh, if you see i have given 20 divisions in the uh, y direction that this is a thing that was there previously because we don't want to solve in the y and z direction we will give only one cells in the y and z direction in the x direction i want to solve so i am giving 100 cells 100 is good enough and i am not giving any grading so this was left so i have done that okay now let me run the block mesh command i have saved it uh, once i run the block mesh command so it has created okay so there are uh, 99 internal so faces i have to remove the end part right the front and back yeah yeah i i removed that already okay. i think so i removed that already yes you have to remove the front and back because we are uh, directly giving a generic label uh, empty so that default patch will take care of those front and back so here i have already removed front and back so i am only keeping side one side two okay because i need only two patches defined rest everything will take this this property of the default patch that is empty so this is the advantage of using default patch you don't have to write okay so i will uh, it is working i will send this file to you now next what we need to change after this we need to change the boundary condition and the properties so boundary condition changing uh, to change the boundary condition you need to open the file using the command notepad dot exe space now boundary condition is in your zero folder so you have to go to zero and then e because you have you are solving only one equation that is of temperature so the command is note notepad dot exe space zero slash p so this file will open so if you see there were additional patches patch 1 patch 2 patch 3 patch 4 which we don't need we need only two that is side 1 and side 2 so you can delete them 
now both are uh, i am calling it side 1 and side 2 this conduction problem is 2d geometry or 3d no we are solving a what see uh, uh, as previously stated in open form everything every geometry will be 3d right mm. but if you have to solve only in one direction you give number of cells only in that direction in the other two directions you give number of cells as one only and you define those spaces as empty so in your block mesh dict file if you if you remember we have given only side one and side two that is left and right the other others all the other sides we have given as empty and we are not giving any any cells in those direction hmm. so over here now what i am doing is i am giving boundary condition only to those two specific sides so my first boundary condition is not zero gradient but it is fixed value now for ease i am giving a zero zero temperature over here so zero temperature on side 1 and zero temperature on side 2 so both the both the places it will be zero and we will see how the temperature at the center will evolve so this is the change that you have to make an internal field yes an internal field should be uniform zero initialization so the inter internally to start with everything will be zero right at the walls it is fixed zero at all times what does uniform signifies uh, because you, it uh, when you are giving uh, say value you want that value to be uniform throughout it didn't didn't understand it, it has to be uniform, uniform mesh or what no 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 say like in this patch when you are saying uniform zero it will be uniform there are also ways in which you can give a non uniform value by non uniform example uh, we have a case we have a case uh, tomorrow i think wherein the velocity say at the inlet will not be constant right if you want to give a parabolic velocity inlet velocity profile then in your whole inlet phase will the velocity be constant okay are you understanding what i am saying yeah 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 uh, so in that case it will not be constant so there we will use something like a, a coded value so okay constant means uh, uniform here hmm huh. so uniform means that is something that is same similar everywhere okay now uh, after make those changes save the file so one one last change we need to make that is in the uh, properties so for that you have to open notepad.exe properties is in your constant folder and then uh, what are the properties transport properties so open notepad.exe constant type transport properties over here you just have to change the value so i think that is the last thing that you need to do and after that you can run sorry i uh, one more thing you need to add the source okay so can you explain the steps after the uh, block mesh command run? after block mesh command you have to edit the you you follow the you follow the ppt please okay. follow the ppt yeah so in your transport properties you need to change the property the property that we are giving is diffusivity okay now this diffusivity value we will give to the value that that we have calculated initially that is 1.15 this is for copper 3 4 e raised to the power sorry e raised to that is e to 10 power minus 4 this is the value that we are giving all this is available in your ppt also you can copy from there if you have missed i am just showing you what what changes you need to do so you need to do this change just one change the value and save it and then close now next you need to edit the fv models file but if you see in our case directory there is no fv models file because we have copied it from the base directory uh, from a base tutorial case so what we'll do is we'll copy the fv models file from a tutorial case that is already there so i'll type i'll i am typing this command you can copy it from the from the slides or in the chat biraj will type it you can copy this command it is a little long command so i i'll you all please copy it you may make a mistake over here and then it will not work 
So what we are doing is from the tutorials folder, we are going to the heat transfer case. In that there is a CHT multi-region case. CHT multi-region foam. In that there is a case called cooling cylinder. 2D and constant. So constant and then solid and then FV models. So this file that is available at this location, I want to copy it to my current location. That is, I want to copy it in my constant directory, in my constant directory. So I hope this works. Yes. So now I just want to verify that. So I'm going to my CD constant. You all don't need to do this. Uh, okay. FP models file is there. So this is the command that you need to type. This command will be available in your chat. Okay. Once this command you have typed, a file named FP models will be copied to your constant directory. Now what we are doing is we are editing that file. Okay. So to edit that file, again, we'll, we are using our, say I'm using notepad. You can use gedit, whatever. Notepad.exe space system and then FP. Sorry. Uh, constant. Sorry, it is not in constant. It is in uh, sorry, it is not in system. It is in constant and then FP models. So when I open this file, if you see in the PPT, till then I will try to explain. In the PPT, this file was written to add a heat source Q. Okay. So in that case, whenever you are using CHT multi-region foam, this type of a source works Q. But it will not work for our case because our source term is different, right? Our source term is of the form Q triple prime by rho CP. So we need to delete this and we need to replace this by some other command. So I'll edit this. You can edit this. Whatever what you need to edit is available in your PPT. If not, you tell me, I'll share the file. If you're ha having any problem, share this file as well. So I'm calling the name. I need to give some name. So I'm calling the name as energy source type instead of heat source. I'm calling it as a semi implicit source. Selection mode all. And then read this and write source. I have to give source for temperature. Explicit value of zero point. Two nine. This value we have calculated. Zero five. Two. This value that we have calculated as a unit of Kelvin per second. And this is just comment that I have added over there so that later on when you use it, you remember that this is not the Q, but it is the value of Q by rho CP. So you can use this same case file to do some other case and maybe modify it. That time you will understand this. So it's always good to add some comments. Okay. So I'm closing this T and then I'm closing that. Sorry. I also close this sources. You can copy this. Yeah. yeah. So I will copy. Should I copy this whole text or should I? The text. Yeah. Okay. I will just copy this text so that maybe you can copy paste this whole thing. Mm. Just let me verify it once. Energy source type semi implicit source selection. Can you please explain these terms uh, 
uh, which you are using here, same semi implicit source, explicit. Yeah. So uh, I've sent it to you. Okay. Yeah. In the chat, you can copy that. Now, uh, see it quickly to tell you there are different ways of adding a source. Like first, if you see it was heat source. So those are some default ways in which open open form ex, uh, what you can say accepts the source. Semi implicit way of uh, specifying is it you can specify what is the explicit uh, contribution and the implicit. By implicit I mean whenever you give an implicit contribution, whatever value you write over there, it will be multiplied by t. So I think it is of that form, right? Like if you add uh, if your source is say if you are adding a source, uh, say. How do I give an example? If say if your volumetric heat generation is also a function of some other parameter, right? Then it will be an implicit, like it is a function of temperature, like in this case. So then that will be in your implicit contribution. But our right now our temperature, whatever value we are giving is con is constant. So that goes into your implicit. You can read up more on this. So it is explicit plus implicit contribution. I think it is of the form SU plus SPX. Okay. So SP is your implicit contribution. So implicit contribution comes in whenever that is also multiplied by the source, right? Like say if this also depends on your temperature, then it will be this into T. So right now we don't need this contribution. So that is zero for us only. So most of the time you will use only this explicit contribution only for very specific case. I don't know. Uh, say in our case in scalar, we can do that, but we have coded. In, in whenever we are doing scalar, we, because our okay, that that maybe I can tell you uh, when we are doing that. So it, it, I think if I tell you now, it will just confuse you more. Okay. So uh, this selection mode all means that you want to add this source in the whole domain. Suppose if you had only a specific part as a heater re remaining is some some say solid uh, some fluid something else. So in that case, selection mode you will write the name of the uh, heater. Say like. Uh, a specific cell zone, like cell zone will be heater. So you will add the source only in that specific cell zone. And volume mode specific means you are adding this into the entire uh, entire volume, like uh, something like watt per meter cube is specific and watt will be a uh, absolute value. So this specific specifies that you are adding this to the entire volume, right? Per meter cube basis or per unit per unit volume basis, you are adding this. So that is what it means. Like sometimes you know that say I I know that my uh, to my heater say I provided 30 watts of heat, so I don't know what is it what it is in watt per meter cube. So I can just specify absolute value as 30 watts. So it will add 30 watts throughout that way, or I can give up per unit volume basis. So this is a, a unit volume basis. So I'm saving this. Hmm. Now after this change, uh, we have changed the source as well. Now we just need to change the uh, start time, end time, delta t values. So you can to change that. All those things will be available in your control dict. Control dict. So it will be in your system, system, and then control dict. Okay. I think in the in the slides there is one uh, typo over there. So L is missing in the control dict. So please, uh, I think Vera just type this command over there so that people don't get confused. L is L is missing. I've made one typo over there. Instead of control dict, I've just written control. Yeah. So this is open. So now everything remains same. My end time, I will maybe increase it to say a few few seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds. I have written 100 seconds over there. This solves very fast. So even if you keep 100 seconds, that is fine. Delta T, I will reduce. And that's it. These are the four changes that we are doing. We are just changing the starting time, ending time, and delta T. Okay, I am saving this. Now I can run the case. Now to run the simulation, first you need to mesh it. Block mesh. So I think I have already meshed, but still I will run, run it. So my block mesh is done. Then to solve it, Laplacian foam. Okay. So it starts to solve. So if you have any problem, the uh, the, the steps are also pasted in your chat. So you all uh, please do that. Yes. So it is done. Now to view the results, go to Paraview. Now I will show the other method. So you need to type touch. 
for those who for whom the default thing is working you don't need to do this you can directly type parafoam i'm i'm demonstrating this method touch result dot foam okay now explorer dot exe to go to that location so these two commands is what the people who are who's uh, need uh, you can say paraview is not working with ubuntu you have installed paraview on windows so when you do this yeah so this is my folder if you see all the time step values have been written over there now i'll just open this result dot form yes so i click on apply instead of solid color i take t okay and if i just move in move ahead in time you see the temperature evolving we can uh, plot it also i am able to see this yeah i'm going to my last time so this is my last time so to show you what i did i i went to the last time by pressing this and i was not able to see this more clearly so you can press this uh, next to your t there's an icon with the i symbol over there that means it rescales the color map to the current values so this is your temperature variation this is same as what uh, i have shown in the uh, in the ppt now if you want to plot this temperature and see whether you are getting a parabolic profile or no you can do the plot over line function that we have already shown you so you can click plot over line now this is my x axis so here in the properties tab i need to go and click on the x axis and then click apply so all the other quantities are getting typed i will remove everything else and leave only my temperature so if you see i am getting a parabolic temperature profile now you can save this by click going to save uh, going to file and then save data and file save data and then select the location okay. select the location where you want to save it so give a file name and file type you can change it to csv comma separated values John, so with this you think plot over line uh, yeah. do we have to change any settings yeah so after selecting plot over line i will show you again i will delete this plot over line okay so now i click on plot over line i think part of my thing is not visible after selecting plot over line you have to uh, click on the x axis so that it plots on the x axis but i think you all have got uh, got the plots so after clicking go to click uh, yeah you have to enable the properties tab from the view then you can why, see why 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 is it gone in para view yeah, i didn't click in para view itself yeah. your properties tab is not visible that you have to enable how how, how did it get disabled that is Maybe I click somewhere. <laughs> yeah, in view view tab. Yeah. yeah. Why why uh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is getting yeah, we can. okay. Yeah. So you here you can see that. Now you have after, to select the plot over yeah, line. So you see now this is your temperature. If you initially select, you will get something like this. If you go to your last time step, you will see something like this, right? And wherein you are not able to see the full variation uh now if you click on rescale it will rescale the data for the current time step so that you see the variation now you have to click on plot over line if you see over here you click on plot over line after this it will arbitrarily take a point from this uh, what you can say one corner to the other but if i want it along the because my variation is only along the x axis so i can click on x axis over here once i do that i need to click apply and then i will get this so i'm getting all some other properties also which i don't want so i'll uncheck all of those and i will see only the temperature so this is the temperature profile that i'm getting you can save this save it as a give whatever location you want and save it as csv file 
So these things are what you need to do. Then after you do that, so what I've also done is after I've extracted that data, I have compared it with the analytical solution. This solution is in, available in Intropair, right? So uh, the orange one is my simulation results. Black one is analytical. If you, as you can see, it is a very good match. Okay, so this way you can also verify. Now, as an assignment, what you can also try to do is after this, try to change, like we have given both the end temperatures at zero. You know, so keep one end, end at zero, maybe keep one end at say five or something, and then see how this profile will shift or keep the other end at one first and then see how this changes. Maybe change the heat source value, in, increase the Q value, but you need to do this calculation to know that if I increase my Q value, what should be my source term? So this is something that you have to calculate. So this will be an assignment for you. I think with this, we have finished our first session.